Hello, and welcome to another video. Today we're going to try and understand the concept of an abstract data type, also abbreviated as an ADT. This was quite a confusing topic for me when it was first introduced, but understanding abstract data types has made many other computer science topics easier to understand. Before jumping right into it, let's hit the rewind button first and make sure we understand some simpler structures. For this video, I'll discuss these in the context of Java. We can start off with our very basic primitive data type. In the context of Java, there are eight primitive types, and if you're new, you'll probably have at least seen the integer, double, character, and boolean. Just in case you're wondering here, strings actually refer to objects rather than primitive types in Java. So, what's special about primitive data types? These are our data structures that cannot be broken apart into simpler structures of data. They're essentially the building blocks for more complex data structures. For example, let's take a look at a linked list here that holds integers. The linked list itself is not a primitive type because it can be broken down into the individual integers it contains. However, once it's been taken apart into its constituent integers, it cannot be simplified any further as integers are one of our primitive types. So now we can move on to our user-defined types. User-defined types allow us to create our own data types so we're not just limited to those eight primitive types. In Java, we can make these using classes. A class holds a set of behaviors, which you may know as instance methods, and a set of characteristics, which you may know as instance variables. Let me show you what I mean. Let's consider the person class, which we're using to make the user-defined type person. Our person type, just like any real person, can have a set of characteristics and behaviors. In this case, Let's say our characteristics are a name, an age, and a salary. These are the instance variables for the person type. Next, we can have a set of behaviors, perhaps a work behavior and a sleep behavior. These are our instance methods. A great option we have when we make user-defined types is inheritance, where one class can inherit another class. For example, if I made a new class called employee that inherits the person class, then the employee class can have access to everything from the person class. This also means that an object of type employee is also of type person. The concept of an object having multiple types is known as polymorphism and is a very important and powerful tool in object-oriented programming. Now we are ready to talk about abstract data types. First, let's address what we mean by abstract. Abstraction refers to us hiding the complexity of a system underneath some higher level or more general idea. Take the stack abstract data type. Let's take a quick second to recall that a stack is a linear structure operating on a last in, first out basis, just like a stack of books. Stacks can be implemented using an array or linked list and have the methods push, which adds to the stack, pop, which removes from the stack, and peak, which shows you the top value of the stack. But what makes a stack abstract? Let's say we choose an array to implement the stack. Well, the stack itself is simply a concept based on the behavior of the underlying array structure. To use the push method, we do not need to know whether the stack's underlying structure is an array or a linked list, and we do not need to know how the push method was implemented. This adds a layer of abstraction between the concept of a stack and what it actually is in terms of implementation. There are many other examples of abstract data types relying on some underlying structure. For example, the stack and queue abstract types can both be implemented by a linked list. As you know, a queue behaves differently from a stack, even though their underlying structures are the same. The difference lies in the methods implemented on that linked list. A graph can be implemented using a 2D array, also known as a matrix, and a binary tree can be implemented using an array as well. So why do all of these data types matter? Well, we can have a stack containing primitive types, 
but this certainly is not always the case. Abstract data types can house our user-defined types. A rather unfortunate example would be a company laying off some of its workers on a last hired, first fired basis. Now we'd have a stack containing employees and someone calling the pop function on the stack. Again, the user does not need to know how pop works or whether the stack is using an underlying linked list or array structure. The abstract nature of the stack hides its complex details underneath the broader idea of the stack structure. If you've made it all the way to this point in the video, I hope it's been helpful to your understanding of this concept. It can certainly be quite a bit to wrap your mind around, but once it clicks, it's actually really cool. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and let me know what you'd like to see next in the comments down below.